Well, hello, boomers, and welcome. Thanks for joining me today. I do hope you're feeling healthy and happy, and I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to join us today here on Boomer Island. Woo! I just had a moment, and that's what I want to talk today about is moments. We got a lot of them, and what are you doing with your moments? This is the Boomer Island Podcast. Welcome ashore, friends. Well, all right, all right, all right. Moments in our life, they're like waves on the ocean. They just keep coming and coming at us relentlessly. And that's to our good fortune, right? Because as time rolls on, these moments... They end up getting stacked up and they're stored in our memory banks. And then you ask, what are memories? I mean, are they even real? They seem kind of dreamlike. Every time you recall or think of a memory, don't they get changed and a little diminished? Because you're looking at them through a new and a different lens. So many moments have passed. I mean, I'm going on 65. There's been a lot of mementos in my life. And they're just like clouds drifting across the sky. And then those moments turn into memories, but they seem to get diluted in the fog. Get a little hazy out there, Sherlock. And wouldn't it be interesting, think of this, witness, to be able to witness a fond memory. Like think of a fond memory, like maybe the first person you kissed or some great achievement you had or you know, some great vacation or something that you really remember fondly. And then imagine, if you will, like you have a time machine. And so you can go back to that exact moment, that exact memory, and be the proverbial fly on the wall and then watch yourself in real time. What do you think that would look like? And have you ever had like a distinct memory of something you did with somebody else? I mean, It's just etched in stone in your noggin, you know, and it's a shared memory. And then when you both reminisce about it, the details are different. What happened? Now, I don't know if you all did this exercise in grade school, but, and this is the way I remember it, our teacher took five kids to conduct an experiment. Come on, children, we're going to have an experiment. And she had four of the kids go wait in the hall and told the remaining student a short story that had, you know, a few details to it. Like the red bike rode up the steep hill or blah, blah, blah. Then she called in one of the students from the hall and the first student was instructed to repeat the story to that student. And then that student was to repeat the story to the next student and so on until the fourth kid told the fifth kid the story. And it wasn't even close to the same story of the original. Hey, now, what happened? Now, I believe this was to illustrate that we all have different memories and attention capabilities or something like that. My memory ain't so clear. Or as a friend of mine used to say, I got a great memory. It just doesn't last long. But the point I'm trying to make is that we all have our own realities and our own stories. And as time passes, I believe we manufacture reasons why we did what we did in our bad memories and have a tendency to glorify our cherished memories. Does that make sense? And here's a little take on memories. little take on memories. We seem to be caught up in the idea that we always have to make memories. Come on, let's go over there and make some memories. You know, that's a valuable idea been around since as long as I can remember. I actually remember my dad, he had this little movie camera and he used to shoot stuff in black and white. Then we'd look at it. It wasn't really artistic, but fun to look at. And some people around actually had 35 millimeter cameras or something decent. And then came along the Instamatic and disposable cameras. And that got me in the game, you know. I was out there snapping some pictures. Remember those cubes that were... uh, For flashes, they'd switch over. But with all these cameras, you never knew what you had until later when the film was developed. Then came the Polaroid camera, where we can get pictures instantly, exactly like today, only different. You know, shake it like a Polaroid, everybody. 
But people were always cautious with the pictures they took, and they tried to make every one of them count. Remember that? Because every picture costed money. And now we fast forward to the digital age, and we are picture-taking maniacs. Some of us take pictures and videos of everything and anything. Hey, you want to see what someone else made for me to eat? Well, here you go. It is a huge advantage that we have these large catalogs of photos that we can always look back on to reminisce, stir up our memories, which is a beautiful thing, right? Or is it? You know, we might want to pump the brakes just a little on all this documentation. It's a great way to share with family and friends, but when did it become a worldly addiction where everyone wants everyone to see our pictures? Maybe the old grumpy boomer's coming out of me, but it seems to me that so many of us are staring at our phones and trying to create a moment that there are many other real moments passing us by. Maybe it's time we practice a little moderation. All right, now I want to ramble a little bit on our precious moments. You know, paying attention makes almost any moment worth living. Living in the moment, to break out an overused cliché, So many of our moments are thinking of the past or planning for a future moment. You know, sure, it's well and good to prepare and plan ahead for a better future. We all know the feeling of planning for an exciting vacation months ahead. But then it arrives and it's gone in a flash. So here's another cliche for you. Enjoy the journey. Or maybe in our vacation scenario, it might be enjoy the journey before the journey. The way to try and do it is to not find yourself lost in thought. While you're lost in thought, while I'm lost in thought, while we're lost in thought, we're ignoring the miracle and beauty of the present moment. You know, and that's quite a trick because all we have is the now. I mean, this is our life right now, right now, right now. I believe that many of us, me included, were unknowingly getting our journey hijacked literally before our eyes. We all enjoy scrolling through the internet for a million different reasons, but I think it's made us have a shorter attention span and a need to always be stimulated. Give me some stimulation. Bring it on over. Damn you, Zuckerberg. Damn you, Google. Damn you, TikTok. You know, I'm presently putting a time limit on how long I stay online because I just rifle through one video to the next. Am I wasting precious moments watching a flood of one to two minute clips for an hour? You know, I try to tell myself, hey, you're getting some good information here. This is really entertaining. But I think I'm fooling myself. It's like crack for the brain, man. I mean, I'm addicted to it like cocaine or heroin. I think it started out with the internet porn and now it's the internet everything. It's got such an amazing power. But do we use it to really learn or are we just scrolling maniacs to get stimulated? You might say, yeah, I can learn about Picasso. But then you rifle through Picasso and then it's on to Van Gogh and then Michelangelo. And are we absorbing anything? How do we control this power? How do we use it to our advantage? I know, man, I research anything and everything. I mean, I can't buy a thermos without researching it. I think I'm losing my critical thinking and my ability to be more creative because I fact check almost anything I see or read. All right, then. Let me get philosophical here and try to explain how I believe we can enjoy more moments. Enjoy more momentos. You know, whether we realize it or not, we are actually changing every moment. You know, we see this most profoundly with children, right? We notice their changes virtually every day. But the fact is, we all do. As adults, we just have this amazing ability to duplicate the person we were yesterday. But that doesn't have to be the case. No, no, no. Every new moment is a new opportunity And we're so lucky that each day brings us thousands of moments. And that means thousands of new opportunities. I don't know if you meditate, but I started meditating quite a while ago, years ago. And it helps me. And I know you hear blah, blah, blah. But anyway, one of the first things you learn in meditation is to pay attention to your breath. 
It sounds simple, but it's actually difficult. And if you don't think so, I challenge you to close your eyes and focus on your breath. Just focus on your inhalations and your exhalations and see how long you can go before your mind wanders off to some other place. And the practice is to help you pay attention. And paying attention is the key. It's the key to being in life, right? I think so anyway. You know, we generally judge our lives by big things that happen, memorable things, you know, from the great victory to our stunning losses or from things that have given us great pleasure or great sorrow or pain. But what I've learned through meditation is it's all about the precious moments in between the measurable pain and pleasure moments that can make seemingly dull tasks and dull scenarios worth your attention. You know, I try to pay attention to moments in between, like when I open a cupboard door to get out a coffee cup or brushing my teeth. Seems a little weird and that it's not even easy. I have to continually remind myself to do it. You know, when you do, you're doing this now, check it out. But since I've been focusing more on these in-between moments and keep practicing, paying attention to them, I'm gaining equanimity, truly am. I mean, after all, we live our life in moments, and you can only make the most of your life one moment at a time. Break out another cliche, Billy boy. Have you ever asked somebody, how you doing? And they answer, same shit, different day. I know it's just kind of a crude, throwaway response, but it's also not true. You know, you think you're on a merry-go-round, and you think you do the same commute, you think you do the same job every day, but it's really all brand new every day. Now, if you ever saw the movie Groundhog Day with Bill Murray, the movie illustrates that fact. If you haven't seen it, I highly suggest you check it out. Super entertaining, funny, and it's got a message. And this won't ruin the movie for you, so I'll tell you that it's basically the idea that you can make every day better. We can do it. And to point out the miracles that surround us in this world, that we aren't even aware of, I point to you a YouTube video of Milton Friedman. Now, if you've never heard of him, he was an American economist. And so go on YouTube, type in Milton Friedman, it's F-R-I-E-D-M-A-N, and just pencil. And I'll give you the bullet points of that video. But really, check it out. I highly recommend it. He talks about the fact that not a single person in the world could make a pencil, something as simple as a pencil. The wood comes from a tree. It took a saw to cut down the tree. To make the saw, it took steel. To make the steel, it took iron ore. The black center we call lead is really compressed graphite that comes from a mine. The red top, the eraser, comes from the rubber tree. Then there's the brass ferrule that connects the eraser to the wood, the paint, the glue that holds it together. Thousands of people from all over the world cooperated to make the pencil. And they don't even speak the same language. They practice different religions and might not even like one another if they ever met. Now, that's just the bullet points. He he says it way more eloquently, obviously, and makes some very interesting points about the free markets and whatnot. So check it out, man. Check it out. So when I'm really paying attention and noticing things, even the simplest of things, I realize that it took great effort to achieve these man-made things. You know, I don't have to go to the Hoover Dam or see the Empire State Building. And it doesn't even mean I have to know how it was done, but that I notice it and appreciate it. Of course, if I'm curious, I can go down the old rabbit hole on the internet and gain some knowledge about whatever I'm looking at. When I really want to blow my mind, I pay attention to nature. Beautiful nature. And if I really want to twist my mind and go cray-cray, I check out human nature. And I realize that making the most of every moment doesn't mean I always have to create something or be productive. It's just a matter of noticing the world and paying attention to it. That makes the most of every moment. Then you get those tweener moments. That's why the realization that we're going to die makes the simplest things in life so much more meaningful. 
As Warren Zevon said, after he knew he was dying from cancer, enjoy every sandwich. And that's all I have to say about that. All right, boomers, we have two.